Joshua chapter 12. Now, chapter 11 finished the battle in the land of Cana for Joshua. Joshua 12 is a recap. Going over the books. This is what we did. Now, these are the kings of the land which the children of Israel smote and possessed their land on the other side Jordan toward the rising of the sun. This would be on the east side of Jordan. From the river Arnon unto Mount Hermon, all the plain of the east. Sihon king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, and ruled from Aurora, which is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and from the middle of the river, so it would be like an island, or the middle of the river was the boundary, and from half Gilead, even unto the river Jabbok, which is the border of the children of Ammon. And from the plain of the Sea of Chinnereth, Galilee, Sea of Galilee, on the east, unto the Sea of the Plain, even to the Salt Sea, Dead Sea, on the east. The way to Bethshemeth, and from the south under Ashdod-Pisgah. And the coast of Og, the king of Bashan, here's that guy again, he's always mentioned, which was the remnant of the giants. I thought they couldn't kill the giants. I thought the giants were too big. That dwelt in Ashtoreth and Andrei, and reigned in Mount Hermon, and in Sok, and in all Bashan, unto the border of the Gershites and the Machrites, and the half Gilgad, the border of Sihon, the king of Heshbon. Then did Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the children of Israel smite. So this is when Moses was still alive. It's Deuteronomy. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave it for a possession unto the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Again, this land that is on the wrong side is never said to be given by God, but given by Moses. Reubenites, the Gadites, half-tribe of Manasseh, can we have this land? It is so great. Lot. Lot saw it was green and wonderful and took it. They are on the wrong side of the Jordan River. They're to cross the Jordan River and settle. They cross and fight, but they go back and live. And they will be the first ones that go into captivity. And these are the kings of the country, which Joshua, okay, paragraph now, verses 1 through 6 is what Moses did. Verses 7 to 24 is what Joshua done. These are the kings of the country, which Joshua and the children of Israel smote on this side Jordan on the west the proper side from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon even unto Mount Helic that goes up to Seir and Joshua gave unto the tribes of Israel for possession according to their divisions and we'll be looking at those to the rest of the book of Joshua so this was written chapter 12 is written after Israel gets his divisions Israel gets the, the lines. This is one line. This is your line. In the mountains and in the valleys, in the plains, in the springs, in the wilderness. Describes what the land is. The land is all kinds of things. In the south country, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, and the Jebusites. Which God said, wipe them all out. Jericho, the king of Jericho won. That's the first one. Now we're going to go review what we've done already in Joshua, the victory. He said, well, why can't God just put the king of this, the king of then? Because the Holy Spirit has power in the word of God by the book, by the chapter, and by the verse numbers, and by the words itself. Had God shortened the word of God, the word of God would not be as wonderful and as mathematical as a wonder as the words are. If God had done the short inversion, God wrote what he wrote. The Holy Spirit has put down what he's put down. And when you study the word of God and you look forward to there are certain verses, there are certain chapters, there are certain ways the words are. They go together. They match wonderfully, even over long periods of time. So the king of Jericho won. The king of Ai 
which is beside Bethel 1. So there's got to be another Ai. And Joshua says the one by Bethel. The king of Jerusalem. That's not Jerusalem when Joshua was fighting. I don't believe it's named Jerusalem until David fights the Jeb Jebusites. But it's mentioned in Joshua as Jerusalem. It's not the city yet, though, unto David, one. The king of Hebron, one. The king of Jermoth, one. The king of Lachish, one. The king of Eglon, one. The king of Gezer, one. The king of Deber, one. The king of Geder, one. The king of Horma, one. The king of Arad, one. The king of Libna, one. The king of Adullam, one. The king of Makeda, one. The king of Bethel, one. That's the Bethel where, where Jacob was. Joshua gets victory over that land and claims that land for Israel where Jacob slept on the rock. Now, some of these names we may be mispronouncing. I don't think God's going to throw down light in both. You didn't sound that name correctly, but you know what? As a family and these videos that put out there, if you're to follow, you're getting every word of God. And Jesus said to Satan, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which is quoted out of law. And when you're reading your Bible and you're going through your Bible throughout the year, you say, you know, you don't have to sit there and say the king of Mecca won, the king of Bethel. So just put your eyes over it if you don't know what it is. And if you're studying and you come to a word, then study that word out. But put your eyes over every single word, but don't worry about if you got the pronunciation correct. The king of, verse 17, Tepa won. The king of Hefer won. The king of Aphek won. The king of Lasharon won. The king of Madon won. The king of Hezer won. And some of these cities, you're going to be reading again. Some of them, you'll never hear again. The king of Madon won. The king of Hazer won. The king of Shephramiron won. The king of Ashephip won. The king of Taka, Taku, Tanka won. The king of Megiddo, oh, that's an important one. Megiddo won. The king of Kedish won. And you might be able to find these on a map. The king of Jochum of Carmel won. And these are in the land of Palestine. That Carmel is the first time Carmel shows up in the Bible. And that's the one that shows up later on. Carmel. The king of Dor in the coast of Dor won. And the king of the nations of Gilgal. Oh, here's Gilgal. It's Gilgal's made of nations. And there's one king. Almost like the United Nations. There's one building. There was one place. And there's one person that's over to all that. The king of Tarza won. All the kings, 30 and 1. And that's just a recall. That's all it is. But it's important that the Holy Spirit says, let it be in there. It identifies cities, identifies victories, identifies to the United Nations, it identifies to the children of Ishmael and the Middle Eastern countries. Joshua got victory. And because of Joshua, that belongs to Israel. You got a problem with that? I'll just cast you off as the goat nations. And you won't even see my throne. Jesus Christ's throne is going to be settled in verse 10 in Jerusalem. And all the cities and all the reigns around that will be under the authority of Jesus Christ. Of the 12 apostles. Of the children of God through the church that done right done what God's told them to do, that he inherited inheritance over the land, over which you'll have David, the prince, and you will have the 12 uh, tribes of Israel, Jacob, Joseph, I mean not Jacob, Joseph, Judah, they will be coming and have authority over the lands as Joshua will put it. There's going to be a lot of heads over this land. And then you'll be having the priests in Jerusalem, right in front of Jesus Christ. David could look out his window and see the, the ark. Jesus is going to look out that window. He's going to see the Levites, and they're not going to put him on the cross. 
They're going to elevate him. They're going to raise him up. David's going to sing. David's going to play. David's going to dance before Jesus Christ. If anybody like Micah doesn't enjoy it, get out of here. Just get out of here. If you don't want to enjoy the Lord, you don't belong here. It's going to be a time of feasting, time of, of, of Israel's in their land. They're rejoicing before their Messiah, before their king. And chapter 12 says this is their land. Chapter 12, if you were to read this before the United Nations, they'll throw you out. If you were to put this down in the newspapers of Islam, they would kill you. Matter of fact, Joshua chapter 12 and the other 66 books of the Bible are not even allowed in many of the nations around the Middle East today. If you are a soldier in the United States Army and you are dispatched, you are sent to the Middle East countries as protection... They will tell our country, you tell your soldiers, leave the Bibles home, confiscate those Bibles. We don't want them here. Okay? And you know what I would do as a president, as a captain and commander in chief? All right, fine. You you sell your own battle. You don't want our Bibles, You don't want, then you don't want our soldiers. And I'll tell you what to do. The Bible says you're to protect that Jew. You're to bless that Jew. We're going to put a military outpost in Israel. And anybody attacks Israel, we're going to blow the hell out of you. And I mean that word. If I was president, I put troops in Israel, I put armies in Israel, protect them, I would put missiles. One missile into Israel, attack, you're going to find 45,000 missiles coming your way. That's how you get blessed. This is a title deed to the land by Joshua, recorded in Joshua. Now later on through David, we're going to get the title deed of verse 10, Jerusalem, when he purchased that. And it's recorded in the Bible. I guarantee it's not recorded anywhere else but the Bible. So put it there. Keep it there. Don't change it. Don't add to it. Don't subtract from it. Leave it as God has wrote it. Because it's very important. 